While studying law, I had the good fortune of being mentored by my dean at that time, Dr. Huito R. Salonga. As you know, he was number one in the 1944 bar ex examinations, after which he took his master's in law at Harvard and his doctorates in jurisprudence at Yale. He became Senate president and now in retirement is widely known as the best president the Philippines never had. <laughs> it was Dr. Salonga who constantly inspired and guided me to excel in all things and to prioritize my academic studies. Much like a father, he would tell me often enough, I don't care if you are the president of the Central Student Council of FEU and head of the National Union of Students of the Philippines. Your priority as a law student should be your academics. He emphasized that extracurricular activities were merely secondary to formal education. He gently reminded me, to whom much is given, much is also required. That was his way of saying that he expected me to laugh among the top ten in my bar examinations. And so right after graduation ceremonies, I immediately prepared for the examinations. My approach was two-pronged. First, I was determined to improve my writing skills, both physically and intellectually. I bought multi-line grade one pad paper to relearn how to write legibly. As you are surely being told now, I was advised then that bar examiners were grumpy, old, and poor-sighted lawyers who did not have the patience to decipher the handwriting of physicians. <laughs> I also assumed that the bar examiners were used to reading grammatically correct, neatly prepared briefs and pleadings. Thus, I reviewed basic English with my English one professor, laying emphasis on how to write clearly, correctly, completely, and concisely. Second, I studied intently. I strictly observed a rigid schedule of six hours of sleep and 20 hours of review. <laughs> That's wrong addition, isn't it? That's all right. Lawyers are not known for mathematics. <laughs> With awe and reverence, I listened to the bar reviewers. In all my readings, I took nothing for granted. At times, discouragement would follow, a realization of how much I did not know. When discussing cases and problems with my fellow reviewers, it became fascinating, however, to discover that my mind could recall what I thought I could not. Indeed, my memory could be depended on. I assure you, that if you feed your minds with data attentively enough, you would recall the specific information when the need arises. The last few weeks of my review were marked by increasing anxiety. Then something unexpected happened that punctured my well-laid plans. I had severe flu and gastroenteritis and had to be confined in the hospital during the first week of the bar examinations. We need, I walked from the FEU hospital to the nearby University of, University of the East where the exams were then being held. Because of my illness in the first week of the bar examination, I thought I had fared badly in civil law and land registration, which were then the initial tests. Disheartened and discouraged, I thought of discontinuing with the examinations. But Dean Salonga was adamant and emphatic in advising me to continue. So, I persevered and prayed hard. For sure, those of you who are in the top 10% of your batch, particularly the 39 honor graduates, are expected to make it to the magic 10. 
Having been there myself, I know how the expectation adds to the pressure and the stress. But do not despair. Just go on and study the best way you can. Get enough rest. Eat moderately. <laughs> stay healthy. And pray for strength and guidance. And believe that there is life after the bar. <laughs> While I myself think that the bar examinations are not the absolute measure of a good lawyer, still, tapping the bar has its advantages. I know that bar placer, placers carry the distinction all their lives. And throughout their career, as they usually become great lawyers, jurists, legislators, executive officials, or successful practitioners and business persons. The achievement attached to one's name permanently, though not to one's tombstone, I hope. For prospective employers, it is also a nice catching piece of information in an applicant's resume. To show you that that is true, even before you pass the bar examination, especially for the 39 honor graduates, after the bar, see me in the Supreme Court. And if you want a place among the law clerks, I assure you, you will be admitted. 